What are you doing? Wait, can you say something? Say what? About the group genetics. Well, usually you're like, I need to talk to the camera first. <laughs> Indigo. Are you just chewing on everything? No. I missed it. She was chewing, chewing on the pants, but I missed it. Here, hey. Arrows, come here. Come here, puppy. Don't chew on me. Don't chew on me, you. Hey, everybody better <laughs> stop chewing on my skirt. Man, that's not nice. <laughs> yeah, you tell them one bunch. Are you chewing on my skirt? Hmm? Quit chewing on me. You? I was curious to see what Dennis would think of our new buck pen makeover. Wow. They seem to like it. They all just came out of there. Hey, what's happening, buddy? What are you doing? How are you doing? Yeah, no kisses for you. No kisses for you. Mm. Okay. All right. <laughs> He is the most friendly goat ever. <laughs> Last time I did something like that was at a petting zoo. I don't know what it was, but it spit on me. Oh. <laughs> Hi. What's happening? Well, all these bark chips are really just kind of a band-aid situation. We have too many goats for this spa size space. And, uh, it, you know, right now it's keeping them clean and dry. But uh, we're really going to have to... Seriously, think about selling some goats. Oh, really? We just got too many, too many in this space. Yeah. This keeps the moisture off the ground. Exactly. We had too. just incredible mud and uh, and goat poop and everything. So it's just just needed to do something. Yeah, I don't need any goats. <laughs> that's recording. I'm not gonna say what I was gonna say. <laughs> what are you gonna say? Mmm, <laughs> goat milk, goat cheese. Goat meat is delicious. <laughs> We're thinking about having some of them butchered. We originally bought the three bottle baby goats to butcher for meat, but they've been so cute. It's like, oh man, right. how do we, how do, we do, do, do it? How do we do it? We may end up having to do that. All right, well, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, chicks? Uncle D's here. Oh, spider web, yuck. Oh, sorry about that. Yuck, yuck. Well, the chickens have missed you while you were in Vegas. Oh, yeah, I have to admit, I didn't miss them during that time period. <laughs> hey, guys. Yeah, yep, yeah, pretty ripe stuff, but yeah, they I like know. it. They like it. It's kind of interesting because I never bring any scraps that has been sitting as long. That's some fresh stuff in there too, buds. Look at that. <laughs> All right. previous video, chicken coop sculpture and wilderness weeds, I spoke about how maple trees sometimes grow like weeds and sometimes need to be treated like weeds. For an experiment, just about exactly a year ago, I dug up some volunteers and planted them in containers. It's best to transplant either in the fall after leaves have dropped or in the early spring before leaves have sprouted. These trees had already leafed out, so I didn't really expect all of them to survive. Here's a before clip.
here's how they did. This one did not make it. This one's doing really well, as is this one. Here's another one that's died back a little bit here, but still, still doing pretty good. This one did not make it. We've got another survivor here. And this one did not make it. This little guy's okay. This one I was sure was dead. But look. In the shadow, you can see it a little better. Little tiny new growth right down there. It just goes to show you the tenacity and hardiness of maples. I just seem to be too busy in the early spring to even think about transplanting maples. Maybe you're busy too. If you want a tree that's easy to grow, excuse me, if you want a tree that's easy to grow and hard to kill, maple trees may be the way to go. Hey, what are you doing over there? They were put in containers to help ease the shock of the initial transplanting. Having them right there, it was super easy to water them, especially during the really dry summer months. Let's go ahead and move them to their permanent home, transplanting them out into the forest. First, I have to decide where to plant them. I, I could plant them in a row to help define the walking path, but as they get bigger, their branches might overhang and block the walking path. So I think I'll go with a big circle configuration instead. Even though I am again transplanting these trees at the wrong time of year, I expect the survival rate will be a little bit better because all of their established roots are conveniently contained and easier to keep intact. I didn't shoot video of planting any of these other trees. How many holes does anyone really want to watch me dig and refill anyway? There were seven survivors in total. Interestingly, this little one had the most robust root system. This one over here that I thought was dead, but had that little bit of new growth, had a pitiful root that may not have been even as good as when I first dug it up a year ago. It probably won't make it, but this is an experiment to see how maples do when transplanted under adverse circumstances. These flags are markers so I'll know where the trees are planted when weeds grew up around them. 
you don't want to accidentally step on the trees or accidentally pull them up along with the weeds. The hardest part of transplanting volunteers is getting enough of their fragile and haphazard root systems out of the ground in the first place. A lot of times those roots are tangled up with other plants roots that you don't want to disturb. I'm here at the post office because we're finally getting around to doing the genetics on our goats. The big one has some goat hair in it and the little one is going to the American Dairy Goat Association basically telling them that we're doing the genetics. You just show the goat hey, go fight my butt. Go fight my butt. So do we need to do the goat genetics for the American Dairy Goat Association or are we doing it for ourselves because we need to know something about breeding our goats? Well, both. In order to register the goats, we need to know about their parentage. So I, obviously we know what goats gave, gave birth to all the goats, <laughs> but we aren't really sure what each goat's father was. We need to figure out whether Lightning or Striker was the daddy for the different sets of, of babies that we had a few years ago. The reason we don't know is at that point in time we did not have the fencing that we have today and this area over here where mostly arrows gets to hang out when we're doing other things. We didn't really have a good way to breed them. Plus, there was a forest fire and we had to evacuate our goats when they were all ready to be bred. <laughs> so there was a bit of a mystery of what was happening with regards to breeding during that time as far as when things were happening and also because we didn't really know for sure if a goat was sort of thinking maybe like we thought maybe they were going back into heat we would just throw them in with both bucks because at that point we were like well we're gonna have to do this anyways we may as well do it for all of them so luckily the american dairy goat association has a service which i registered the goats for quite a while ago but i just haven't gotten around to doing it where you can take some hairs and send them in and then you send it to um, UC Davis and then they will tell us which of the father fathers are the fathers of the different goats so hopefully shortly we'll know who's the daddies of all these goats so who's your daddy <laughs> who's your daddy nice Something special was delivered today. I knew Wendy was ordering a freeze dryer, and I thought those boxes might be parts for it. But no, it was just other things. She got herself a salad spinner. An herb drying rack that's an awful lot bigger than we thought it was going to be. One thing I've been wanting did arrive. It's a weed puller called Grandpa's Weeder. Let's go see how it works. The tines open up like this. You use your foot to press it down around the weed. Then by leaning it this way, it grabs the root and leverage pulls it out of the ground. Wendy now has some mint and lemon balm on the drying rack. Here you go, chicken, some more treats. Look out below.